Well, today I want to talk about the Samsung Plasma TV. This one is a model HPS5053. The problem is it has no picture. The first thing I want to do is I want to power the setup. I'm going to get my voltmeter, put it in the volt range. I'm going to manually put my voltmeter in the 600 volt range. I'm going to connect my negative lead to common ground. I use the ground of one of these jacks down here as common ground. And I've just fired the setup and what I want to look for is on these uh, cables coming from the power supply they'll be labeled VA and VS. Those are the two main voltages I'm concerned with. The VS is 201 volts and if you can see the panel tag up here it says the VS should be 200 so that's very close. So the first two pins are VS, the next pin is ground, and the next two are VA. And according to the panel label, I should have 65 volts, and I do. So I know VA and VS are both good. The next thing I want to do is I want to check my scan buffers, my Y buffers over here. There's an upper and a lower buffer on this model, so I want to check those for shorts. So what you want to look for to check the Y buffer on this model is... Um, all these traces, you can look and you can see that most of them are commonly tied together to this one large copper pad that goes underneath here, except for like these three little traces right here. So what I want to do is go from just a good known ground point to one of the pins either on here, and I see by my meter I have nine ohms, which is not good. I should have many thousand ohms. Uh, 10 ohms, 9 ohms, there's probably a little bit of resistance uh, between my pins and the circuit board, 9 ohms. That's not good, I don't want to see that. Let's check the bottom one as well. So hopefully you can still see that on the camera, but I'm going to do the same thing down here. Polarity is not important when you check this. And down here I've got 1.6 ohms. And so we're looking at probably a bad shorted uh, lower Y buffer, but what I'm going to do is disconnect the upper and the lower buffers real quick and do the test again. So now on this one to disconnect the buffers, let me move my voltmeter out of the way. I've disconnected or removed all the screws so I can actually lift up the board. And once I get the board lifted up far enough, I can just unplug it and fold them out of the way. And the reason I have to lift it up is if you can see on the bottom down here, there is a peg that sticks out, doesn't let me unplug the circuit board. So I've got those folded up out of the way now. Let's put the voltmeter back on here. I'm going to do the same resistance test with the Y buffer boards out of the way. If I see low resistance, that tells me, yes I do, I still see 9 ohms there. If I see low resistance, that tells me that the problem is not on the buffer boards, that it's actually on the Y sustain board. I see 1.5 ohms right there and that is not good. Now there aren't many parts in this circuit that separates the top and the bottom so I know the problem's got to be right down here. In fact if you can see these resistors right here you can see that they've been running very hot. They're actually in parallel. There's four of these resistors. They're 15 ohms each. Brown, green, black. So 15 ohms and there's four of them in parallel so approximately four ohms once everything is said and done here. Down here on the bottom I read the same. So the resistors check actually good. But if I check across these diodes, I see 4 ohms across that diode. Uh, this one checks open, which is good because I'm not on the diode scale. But as I check across these 4 little diodes right here, I see 3 tenths of an ohm. And that's not good. So I suspect probably one of these little diodes they're all Zener diodes and they're in parallel with each other so I suspect uh, most likely one of those little diodes is probably bad. Okay so I've got it out of the circuit so I'm just going to check across uh, the pad where it was because last time it was a dead short and as you can see it is not shorted now it actually charged up so that's a very good sign. Now we need to figure out what voltage this diode actually was. It's a Zener diode based on the markings on the circuit board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one of the other diodes that I know is good and I'm going to test it with the power supply. 
Okay, so here's what I've got. I've attached the power supply leads, or excuse me, I've attached the leads to the end of the diode, so they are just uh, tacked on the end here. Next, I'm going to connect my power supply to it, and I'm going to uh, supply a voltage to it and see what the breakover voltage is, where the diode begins to uh, conduct current. Okay, so I've got my power supply connected up to the diode. There's the diode in between the two leads. So I've got my power supply connected up to it, and it's reverse biased, which means the positive goes to the cathode or the band end, and the negative goes to the anode. And what I've done is I've set my power supply, so the maximum output current is going to be 50 milliamps, and I'm going to set current limiting at about 10 milliamps because I don't want to blow out this diode, so I'm only going to limit it to a max of 10 milliamps. I've got my voltage in the 50 volt range, and so I'm going to run the voltage up very slowly. So there's 10 volts, there's 15, 20, 25, 30. 35. So at about 36 to 37 volts you can see the current starts to come up and that's where the diode begins to clamp. So right there we're at about 36 volts so that's where the diode actually starts clamping. So 36, 37 volts approximately. So I'm going to replace all four of those diodes. Okay, earlier I was talking about the diodes being in parallel. They're not. They're actually in series, which means cathode to anode, cathode to anode. Uh, so there's four of them in series. So if you take the voltage of the diodes, I'm using 36 volts times four. So it's approximately 160 volts that it's using the clamp with. So I've gone ahead and replaced um, all of these diodes. So I've got them. Check them on the meter. Make sure there's no shorts. And you can see the banded end, they might be kind of hard to see from the camera, but that little white tab right there means it's the uh, cathode end, and that's this one right here. The white tab on this side means the cathode needs to be on this side, and that's very particular. They have to be inserted the correct direction, otherwise they will not work correctly. So let's go ahead and hook the Y sustain board back up to it, or the Y buffer boards, and we'll test it out. I forgot to tell you the diode that I had under test, I got distracted, but the diode I had under the test was this one here. All four of the diodes out here were all shorted, so I couldn't test one of those. So I actually had to unsolder this diode on the very top here. And I used my voltmeter or my power supply to test the breakover voltage of that Zener diode. And so I'm not going to worry about these resistors. They all tested just fine. Even though they're, they've are they been a little bit hot, they seem to be just fine with intolerance. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the set on now. There's the powers on. Let's go take a walk around to the front of the TV. And as you can see right now, it's up and running. Even though it says check signal cable, I've got nothing connected to it. It says component one, check signal cable. Let's connect something to it, make sure the picture looks acceptable. Well, that looks just great now. Everything seems to be working just fine. Hopefully we'll get many more years of use out of this and we saved another one from the recycle bin. So that's a very good thing. Actually repairing that Y sustain board only cost for diodes at, um, if you order them wholesale, about 50 cents a piece. So we're way ahead of the game on this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter, NorCal715. I appreciate your views, your support, your comments. I try to answer as many as I possibly can, but I can't answer every single one. I'm just one person. And I do have other things going on in my life besides my YouTube videos. Thanks for all your uh, comments and your support. Everybody have a great day. With your help, we can keep these things out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. Have a great day. Bye-bye.